recording, Daniel. Okay, we're recording to the cloud. I'm Daniel Sanders, District 71 Programme Quality Director. Please welcome Danny Banks, Head of Training. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Daniel. And what an amazing evening. This is the eighth session we've had of Training Tuesdays, and it's the best attended. And if the registrations are anything to go by, there's quite a few more people out there to, who are going to come and join us. So I'd like to give a big thank you to all of you for coming to join us tonight on this training session, which promises to be an exceptional training session, I have to say. I'm going to introduce Moira, and then I'm just going to let her get on with it, because that's what you've come for, to look at evaluations and how you can use evaluations to motivate. For many of you, you will know Moira because she has been a Toastmaster for the last six years. She is very heavily involved in the Zoom aspect of Toastmasters, along with a few others. She took up the, the mantle of Zoom and started helping to train throughout the district. And I know Moira has been involved as Zoom Master for many, many events in the district. She has been a member of Lee Valley Toastmasters, which she helped to set up, as well as setting up an, on, an advanced club, Par Excellence Toastmasters. She's also a member of a third club, which I believe is an online advanced club, the Firebirds Collective. She has worked for many years as a photographer and also in radio and Together with a few of the Toastmasters in Cork, in Ireland, she runs a talk show for talkers on IRI. Uh, uh, Irishtalkers.com. Irishtalkers.com. Yeah. There you go. And it's also a podcast, I do believe, Moira, as well. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 So very well worth listening to. There are lots of topics for Toastmasters on there. But I've said enough. I think you're in for a very informative, a very entertaining evening. So please help me welcome Moira to the floor. Welcome, Moira. Thank you very much indeed for that introduction, Danny. I should also say um, my home club is actually Blarney Toastmasters uh, in County Cork. Welcome, everybody. I'm delighted to see so many people here. So many people I have never had the pleasure of meeting. But I will all, I will know you all from now on. Now, I'm going to do half the work tonight. You're going to do the rest of the work. So be prepared because you're going to have to work to get the best out of this. So I shall now go and share my screen if I can find the right page. <clears throat> Let's get into what we're going to talk about. Evaluate to motivate a feedback framework. Now I have to give kudos to a previous District 71 director, well, governor in those days, which a gentleman called Freddie Daniels. A lot of this is based on Freddie Daniels' method of evaluations. So I like to give uh, credit where credit is due. Let's now look at what we're gonna talk about. So. We're going to talk about the top takeaways. We're going to talk about the benefits of evaluation because there's benefits everywhere to the evaluator, to the speaker, and to the club. Then we're going to look at the uh, feedback mindset. Uh, then the seven step process, which is Freddie's uh, method, Freddie's feedback formula itself. And then if we have time, and if you uh, are patient enough to maybe go over the hour, we'll look at some practice. Right. Does this look familiar to you? I hope it does, because this is the basis of every single speech. Think about that. Content, structure, and delivery. Content, the best content that works every time. Structure, 
the structure that works every time and delivery, effective delivery of your opinion. This mantra applies to every single speech, whether it's a 30 second speech, a one minute speech, a three minute evaluation, a 10 minute speech, or even an hour long keynote speech. It's always those three that you have to concentrate on. Okay, now I should have uh, asked you at the beginning, but I will ask you now to get your mobile phone out or your computer and take a, uh, a shot of that um, icon, whatever you call it, or go to slido.com and put in this hash 66741. And I'm then going to ask you, once you've uh, done that and got ready, I'll give you half a minute or so to get into it. And we'll ask you to write in there what you think the benefits are to the evaluator. Now, you can have as many benefits as you wish to put in. And just because somebody else has put a word in, don't let that put you off because we'll see what is the most popular. So I'll give you a minute now. Oh, wait a minute, I've got to get the, uh, I am of course exceedingly unprepared because I've got everything open on my screen except the one that we want, which is this one. Right, I'm activating the poll now. So participants can now vote at hash 66741. And I'm listening to the results and we'll see the results coming in. Challenge, yeah. Confidence, listening, yes. Delivery, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, we're getting some good, good words coming up here. All right, only 19 people have voted so far, so let's have some more of you. Don't be shy. I need to see the results. How can I see the results? I don't know. <clears throat> Moira. Yes. I'm lost. <clears throat> You're lost. Okay. Have you opened slido.com? I got there. Yeah. And then you should see uh, something which says join or uh, put in a code 66741. Ah, that's what I did not see. That's sort of rather important. <laughs> I, I cannot see that bit. You can't. You can't. Oh, well, so if you can see it, show me. Uh, are you in, no, you're not in Slido. You're in Slido? Yes, I'm in Slido. Slido.do. Okay. Slido. Yeah. Uh, can somebody tell me what is Slido.com? Where do I find that? Slider. Oh, no, 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 it's a website. It's a web page. That, that number. No, type, no, have you typed in the number? That's the number. Yeah. Where do I type it? I've got it now. I've got it on there. Excuse me. When you when you take the picture with your phone, it comes up. There's a bit at the bottom. It says press here to go to slider.com. Send. Sorry. It takes you straight there. We Liz, it's set up, but I don't know what to do. Well, I can't here. wait forever. Where it says type your question, is that where I can type it? Yeah. Yes, that's right. It's not a question, it's not one word. Well, it's an answer, oh. but uh, yeah. Okay. What? Moira, what, I, what? I typed a sentence, but I don't know if you got it because. The question yeah, is, it's, it's an answer. It's a, what was the question? 
<laughs> right. What are the benefits of evaluation to the evaluator, the person who's giving the evaluation? Okay, I think uh, we'd better move on. We've had uh, quite a few people putting in. So the most, the top scoring, let's close the poll. All right, the, activate the poll. All right, where's my screen? There we go. So the top one appearing, oh, I've now lost the answers, damn it. I should have kept the poll open. Let me hide results. Well, again, uh, yeah, the top one was confidence, followed by listening with listening skills as a separate one, structure, yeah, coaching, fun, respect, knowledge, development, self reflection. I like that one, learning and impromptu. Okay, those are all good. But let's see what I have here listening skills, yeah. That was one of your top ones. Listening skills, obviously, the more that we are forced to sit and listen, the more we are going to improve our listening skills. Impromptu speaking, yep, somebody put that in. <coughs> it is very much impromptu because we never have enough time to prepare. And of course, if you're doing this in a competition, you're going to have even less time to prepare. Collating information, that's part of a skill, to be able to be selective and to collate the information into a logical sequence. Being balanced, what does that mean? It means being able to produce both the, what is good about your evaluation and what can be improved, sorry, by the speech. Motivational, being motivating. Obviously, we want to be as motivational. We want to be able to lift people's confidence up. And stage time, stage time, stage time. I say this over and over again. The way that I gained my confidence in speaking was pretty well by putting my hand up every single time there was the opportunity to speak. That got rid of all all the uh, embarrassment, all the nerves, pretty well everything. So take every opportunity to speak, and this is one of them. All right, let's go on to the second benefit. What's the benefit to the speaker? And I will start the next slide. <clears throat> if I can kill that one. Active list, stop that. All right, it's the same number, 66741. So we've now started this one. You can start typing in your answers. And this is the benefit to the speaker. Moira, I. Hello, Moira. Yeah, far away. I'm. Uh... I'm, I'm, I can see slido.com, but do I just type in on the keyboard or do I have to do something before that? No, just type in on the keyboard. Onto, well, when you've, when you've opened slido.com, you've got to put the code in where it asks you for. The, co the code is here, hashtag 66741. Put that in and then in, it'll in. say, it'll then give you the opportunity to type an answer. So right, type right. your answer. And when you put in the first one, you'll see the other people's answers will come up as well and you'll okay. be able to see. No, I'm, I'm, still not, I'm still at join Slido. What do I do next? No, you don't want to join Slido. Well, what do I want to do then? Um, when you put up Slido... Well, when I have this in front of me now and how do I start? Hold on, let, me, let me do this 
with you. Right. So when you go to slido.com, uh, yes, it says, as joining as a participant, no account needed, enter event code. Enter the event code there. Sorry, I just don't seem to be getting past. Do I click on slido.com? Yes. Yeah, I, I don't seem to be getting past. No, it's, I, I'm not getting anything. Well, the actual page is, if you, if you want to go the shorter way, is sli.do. But slido.com will get you to that page. And I just do that on my keyboard. Yep. Within a web page. It's a web page. Oh. So you've got to have your browser up. Help. So, so open, open your browser, Chrome or Safari or Firefox, whatever you use, and type slider.com in the address bar. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I use. I just, um, I haven't uh, used this system before. Well, I, I can't really say No, listen, carry on. I'll just listen to what's sure. going on. <laughs> okay. Well, we've had 37 people have voted, which is good. And let's have a look at my screen. And we've got some, well, pretty well, everybody's uh, putting up the same sort of things, which is good. We have reflection, encouragement and improvement. A lot of people said that. Feedback, of course, is the number one. Praise, growth, coaching, hints, love. I like that. <laughs> um, okay. Let's go back to my slides and we'll see what we say. Now, first one, motivation. Yeah, we want to motivate our speaker this is the most important thing. We want to build and maintain the esteem of the speaker by concentrating on the positive. But, however, be authentic. Don't just praise for the sake of it. Building confidence, obviously. Validation. Now, validation is an interesting one because these are the things that you did well. You fulfilled the object. You did what the project asked you to do. You're validating the fact that they have actually done the right thing. Concrete tips, obviously. Being specific, using examples from the speech. When you said, da 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 then this is either good or can be improved. Ideas for improvement, obviously. Not that you did something wrong, because there's no such thing in Toastmasters. You cannot be wrong, but there is always room for improvement. Even for the best speaker, there is room for improvement. Okay, we'll go on to number three, the evaluation benefits to the club. Now this is, yeah, maybe a slightly different thing for you to think about. Uh, how do I stop that one? <clears throat> We go. All right, the poll is now live. Same place. <laughs> Those are the benefits to the club. All right, the answers are coming in thick and fast. Remember, you, can, you don't have to put just one answer in. You can put in as many answers as you like. Just click on the add response below everybody else's answers. Yeah. Now we're getting uh, quite a few. No, you have to use the browser. Yes. No. OK, if you could mute yourself if you're having difficulty, please. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's okay. Unless you want to ask me a question, I'm happy to take questions, by the way, at any time during this presentation. 
don't feel that uh, you're interrupting me. Oh, um, with those slides, that would be, be present at all for, would it, would it be circulated later? I know a couple of members of my club are unable to attend tonight. Yes, I'll be happy to share them. If you drop me uh, a, an email to moiraobrien at gmail.com, that's the safest, easiest thing. Okay. Cool. Can I put it in the chat? I can't. That's fine. But I'll put it in the chat later. <clears throat> I've, I'm going to share with you some uh, a couple of documents in a minute, which I shall put into the chat. Because we'll need to look at them later on. How are we doing? 41. We've got plenty of people. Okay, I think everybody's probably voted. So let's have a, a quick look at it. Number one, everybody learns. Everyone learns. Well, yeah, that has to be number one, doesn't it? Um, quality, yeah. Variety of speakers, not sure what that means. Reputation, yeah. Positivity, um, yeah. Doesn't really apply to club. Advancement, not sure what that means, but again, uh, quite a few people put that in showcase. Yeah, knowledge, delightful, useful tips for all, quality meetings, same as quality, learn, team spirit. Team spirit, I like that one. Okay, let's go back to my page and have a look at that. Evaluation benefits to the club. Yeah, everyone learns. We all agree on that one. There's no doubt. Everybody in the room is going to learn. <clears throat> it's a relaxed and friendly environment which makes for easy learning. It's a safe environment as well. That's very important, I think, for many people. <clears throat> Let um, others, well, we share, sorry, we share the experience and the growth. It is a shared experience for everyone, not just for the speaker. You don't have to make all the mistakes yourself. That's a very important one. You, if, if we see somebody making a mistake, it's pointed out and we can see how to improve it. Everybody learns how to improve that. We are maintaining our standards in the club. That's very important. It's very important for a number of reasons. And one of the most important ones is that if we have a guest in our meeting, and they see good evaluations, then that guest is more likely to want to join the club than if they see a poor evaluation. And I'm sure we've all seen bad evaluations in our Toastmasters journey, and we've all cringed, I'm sure. I know I have. I've been the recipient of, of bad evaluations, or one or two, very few, I'm glad to say, uh, one of which nearly made me leave Toastmasters. So it is exceptionally important, especially for new members. <clears throat> Oops, uh, sorry, did I? I keep on doing that. I clicked the, right, the wrong button and I don't know if I've gone. No, that's OK. Right, we've got a little uh, exercise here now. So unmute yourselves and I want you to yell out, no, well, not too loud, call out the answers to each of these questions. One times one equals two. two. One. One. Okay, two times two equals four. 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 Thank you. Three times three equals nine. 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 Gosh, we're doing well. Four times four. Twelve. Sixteen. Okay. Somebody say twelve. Twenty-five. 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 Oh dear. What happened? Uh, I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, but I got four out of five right. That's 80%. 80% yeah. is a pass mark in pretty well any mm. exam. Didn't I do well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, what happens is this. Our brains are pre-wired to find <coughs> the, 
whatever is out of sync. So we see those things and we see, yeah, fine, fine, fine. Oh, no, that one's wrong. And we dive in on that one. So this is just something we have to be aware of when we're giving evaluations. But the other thing, of course, is that uh, we shouldn't be looking at things as being wrong, but of ways that the speaker can develop, can improve upon what they're giving. Okay, if you'll mute yourselves again now so that we don't have too much background noise, <laughs> and we'll look at the feedback mindset. But before we do that, I want to share, and I should have done this before, so I'm going to have to stop the share to go into the chat to give you two documents. Uh, the first one is a speech evaluation T-chart, and the second is Freddie's feedback formula. Now, if you can download these two, if I can get them to actually go into the chat, which is a challenge. It's a big challenge. And first of all, it's got to go to everybody. And it's not working. There we go, there's one of them. It doesn't take two at a time, by the way. That's what I was trying doing wrong. Okay, so if you look in the chat, you'll see um, Freddie's feedback formula and the speech evaluation T-chart. I want you to download those and have them ready and available when we go into um, a later slide. So- They're not showing at the moment. You're not seeing them? Well, it's in the chat. So if you open the chat- I have, and they're not visible. Right, anybody else having that problem? Oh, it's visible. Nothing showing. Well, I can't help you there. Nothing showing for me either. You have to download and then you have to open. No, but they should Isn't be the... they should be visible in the chat. Yeah. I can, can see other people's responses that. saying got them and nothing showing, but there's certainly no links showing. Yeah. Um Moira, I'm the same, I can't see anything either. Well, is... I can't either either. This is weird. Uh, I can't download them. Have we? Will somebody else try sharing them? Uh, can I just ask? Is it is um, these people who can't see it? Is it is it on uh, a mobile phone you have, or is it a browser? I'm on a mobile. iPad. I'm on a tablet. Yeah, that could be the issue. Could it could be screen sharing or a? We can, we can distribute them after the meeting with an email if yes. that helps. Yeah, that we'll have to do good. that. I'm sorry, yeah, folks, yeah. for this. This is not something I've had before, and I've done this online three or four times now, and it's not been a problem. So I hadn't encountered it before. But there we are. We can't win everything. And uh, let's go back to the slides. And let's look at the feedback mindset. <clears throat> Right, first of all, we want to be specific. We don't want to be airy-fairy talking about you know, generalizations. We want it to be specific to the content, the delivery, or the structure, or the audience. We want it to be positive because we always want to be raising the esteem of the evaluatee, the speaker. We want it to be constructive, not destructive. Believable and honest. Well, don't be kind just for the sake of it. Okay. You may feel that somebody has done something really bad. Well, don't say, oh, well, they're, they're young and they're new and uh, oh, we'll just make excuses and we'll go on. Then if it's important, home in on that and find how you can make or you can help that speaker to make that particular aspect much better. Lift them up. Always be encouraging. All of these items, <coughs> pardon me, will help you, <coughs> will help you to become motivating. Be balanced. 
what does that mean? It means don't concentrate too much on just one item. If you've chosen the items, and we'll come on to how you choose and what you choose in a second, but if you choose certain items, then give them all an even amount of attention because they're all equally important. Be relevant, well, that should be obvious. Shouldn't need to say that. Be sympathetic, be appreciative, considerate and thoughtful. What do I mean by timely? Well, we have a time limit in our evaluations. We're expected to do our evaluation in three minutes, give or take. So don't go on for five minutes because well, basically that is insulting, if you like, to everybody else because you're taking time away from somebody else. So keep it within time. But make use of the time that you have. You have three minutes. Don't do it in one and a half or two minutes. Give examples. <clears throat> when you're complimenting and you're giving, you're saying, this is very good, you did this. Give examples from the speech of where it was good and then explain why it was good. If it's a, a recommendation and you want to say, well, if you did this this way, it would be so much better. Give a physical example. It helps. Some people are visual, some people are audible, audio, or what's the word? Um, anyway, you know what I mean. Um, I'm a visual person. Oh. Thank you. I'm a visual person. If, if some, I see something being done, then it's going to stick in my brain. If I just hear it, mm, I probably won't. It won't stick so much. And lastly, give solutions. <clears throat> yeah, we are. We want to know how we can be better. And even if you're giving a commendation, you can commend something, but say, if you did it this way, it would have been even better. So don't be limited by just the, the sandwich method of this is good, this could be better, and this is good. Okay. So let's look at the seven step process. We're going to go through these items one by one. So I won't uh, read uh, the slide because you know what that means. Death by PowerPoint. So let's look at the first one. Speak to the speaker. Speak to the speaker before the meeting. Find out what their personal objectives are. What are their personal quirks? I have one. I apparently play with my belt or whatever I got around my waist with one of my hands during my speech. I was not aware of that until it was pointed out to me four or five times. <laughs> now I'm very aware of it and I try to avoid doing it. So it's quite important. Make yourself a little checklist of the things that you want to look at. That's very useful because it will be able you to concentrate your mind on those particular aspects and you can forget about everything else. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> okay, research the project. Read up on the project. It doesn't matter what the project is, you, can, you have access to the information in Pathways. There is, none of the projects are hidden. They're all, the information is all available. If not in Pathways, there are multiple websites which will give you details of every single project. Read up on it beforehand, make sure you understand, you know what the project is calling for. Check on the project's objectives. That's important. The speech should be fulfilling those objectives. If they don't fulfill the objectives, that's something that you probably want to pick up in your evaluation. Check the evaluation guide. Now, if you download the evaluation guide before the meeting, you will have already the framework, if you like it, for giving the written evaluation later. And you'll know exactly what the speech is all about. OK. <clears throat> the evaluation process during the speech. First thing, of course, is to be analytical, to analyze. And what do we want to do? We want to look at the structure, the content, the delivery. You remember that from the beginning? And of course, 
the audience, because the audience reaction is a very important part of how good a speech is going to be. If the audience are playing around with their mobile phones and ignoring you, then the speaker hasn't really managed to get them on side. But if they're sitting upright and listening and smiling and nodding and all these reactions that audiences do, then you know that you're getting through to them when the speaker has got through to them. Connect with the audience, connection with the audience. How good are they keeping the connection? Have they got good eye contact? Have they got not just good eye contact, are they managing to maintain eye contact for two or three seconds with each person? Or are they just sweeping the room generally as some people uh, like to do? <clears throat> What's the purpose of the speech? Are they achieving the purpose? Then prioritize. Now, one of the downloads is the T chart. And the T chart has two sides. On the one side is the format of your speech, your evaluation speech. And on the other side is what we call the T chart, which allows you to make notes and prioritize those notes as in under the various headings of content structure and delivery and audience with what's good about it and what is what can be improved. Then the structure of your speech itself. You want to have an opening, and the opening should be something that is going to grab the audience's attention. I see a, a question there. Uh, what if audiences' videos are not on? There is always one person's video on. That is the timer. Watch the timer. Watch the, re the reaction you're getting from the t that person, so long as they haven't covered up their, um, their camera, which is unfortunately what some people do. It is an issue, and there's not a lot we can do about it when we are online. But obviously, I'm basing this more around a face-to-face on-site delivery. But thanks for the question anyway. Okay, so we greet, we, sorry, we have an opening, which is going to be a grab from the speech or something that is relevant to the speech. We greet Madam Toastmaster, uh, Mr. T fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests, and especially you, Mr. Speaker. And then a maximum of five points. Now, why am I saying a maximum of five points? The reason is this. First of all, you don't want to overwhelm your speaker or the audience. You want to give them enough that they can remember, but not so much that you are really overpowering them with information. You also want to be able to give sufficient detail to each of your points. And the five points are uh, two commendations to start with, two recommendations as normal, and then finally, your best commendation. A conclusion. What do we remember most on any presentation? We remember possibly the first thing that was said, but definitely the last thing that was said. So when we give our conclusion, we do it uh, in a specific way. Instead of doing it in the same way that we, gave, we delivered the, the main body of the uh, evaluation, we give the two recommendations first, get them out of the way, and then we give the three commendations, ending on your best commendation. What I really loved about your speech was this. And that's what the speaker is going to remember. And that means that they're going to go away, hopefully, feeling on top of the world. Uh, timing, yeah, we've mentioned that before. Keep within your three minutes or three and a half minutes maximum. Don't go too long because they're going to forget what you've said before if you go on too long. Another question. 
where does the summarized commentary come in? I'm not quite sure what you mean by summarized commentary. Your summary should be exactly that. If you like it, the headline of each of your recommendations com and commendations. It's in the um, it's in the judges sheet where uh, they are they are you, you are assessed in terms of your summary of the. Yes, that's your conclusion. Sorry. Right. And we'll see that when we actually look at the uh, uh, the the next point. Timing uh, is obvious. Keep within your three minutes. So let's now look at Freddie's feedback formula. <clears throat> so this is the structure that we're going to put on our speech, and this it's it's fairly it's what I said. It's the opening. It's the greeting. It's the commendation, commendation, recommendation, recommendation, commendation, and summary. But the important thing to take out of this is what is put below. First of all, be specific. Well, we said that before, we'll say it again, be specific. But the important thing with a commendation is you say, what are you commending? Why you are commending it? And when it was used. Okay, get that firmly into your head. What, why, and when. And the most important word in there is why. With a recommendation, the more important words are why and how. What they did, why it could be improved upon, when it happened, yeah, and how are we going to improve it. And lastly, the summary. Signal the fact that you are making a summary, a inclusion, in summary, whatever you want. And always finish on the positives. In a contest, there is 15 points on offer for giving a summary. If the, speak, the evaluation contest speaker does not give a summary, they will lose those 15 points. That's very valuable. And it's, it's there for a reason. It's there to encourage you to give the summary. But the summary should be exactly that, not rehashing the whole of the evaluation, but just saying, I like this, I like that. You could do this better, you could do that better, and this is what I like most. Just the five things, bang, 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 bang. <clears throat> right, so during the process, we're delivering it, we're being specific, we're doing the commendations. This is all what we've just covered. <clears throat> Encourage your listeners to apply what they have heard and what they have learned, and that's for the audience. And who do you speak to? Do you speak to the speaker? Do you speak to the audience? Or do you do a combination of both? And we are a little bit different in Ireland and England. We do things a slightly different way. What I like to do is to address the audience for the general points, but for the recommendations, address the speaker. So it's a mix and match, but this is entirely up to you. It's, it's, not, a, uh, it's not a given. Right, after the evaluation, what do we do? We fill out the evaluation form, obviously. We complete the, the front page from your T-chart, which just gives you the opportunity for having a script. Once you've done this a few dozen times, you'll find that rather than writing things out, you just put headlines in. And that's good. I still do that, even though I've given, I don't know, 100, 200 evaluations using this method. I still put those things in because it's, it helps me to be clear and to give my evaluation in a way that can be understood and easily absorbed. Make your recommendation specific and your feedback specific and fill out the one to fives on the evaluation sheet that you're going to give for them to file away and be honest with the one to fives. And I'd like to make a little point here. Five means you should be paid to speak. You're that good. Don't give a five unless your speaker is exceptionally good. In the 
the notes, the handout notes, which you'll get after the meeting, I've given a, a little bit at the bottom of what bottom of what I think the one to five should be. One to one feedback. Go and buy the speaker a drink after the meeting. Give them the detail of what was on your T-chart, which you didn't actually get to talk about, because there's, there's hopefully going to be more things on there than your five points. There may be seven or eight points. So go through those points. Get their feedback on your evaluation. Their feedback is probably more important than the general evaluator's feedback, because did they like it? Did they agree with it? Did they think it was a good evaluation? Did they think that you could have done better? We can learn from them just as much as we learn from the general evaluator. Okay, now we have 15 minutes left. I do have a speech lined up. <clears throat> uh, it's a speech that I gave. If you like, we can play the speech and we can have one or two evaluations uh, sample evaluations from members, volunteer evaluations. Uh, if you wish to continue the meeting beyond the one hour, I'm happy to carry on for another 15 minutes or so if you are and if you want to get an evaluation in. So uh, if you're happy to do this, raise your hand in the, uh, the participants box. And if we see enough, I can't see them. So Danny, can you uh, see if everybody's happy to do this? I'm trying to see them. We have a look. Well, there's very few. One, <laughs> two. Okay, well, that is the end of the presentation. If we don't want to uh, actually do any uh, test evaluations, uh, I am open to questions and discussion, if you wish. We have 12 minutes left, so it's up to you. Alternatively, we can go on and the two or three people who said they want, they're interested, we can do the uh, test evaluations. Let's, let's run the speech anyway. Should we do that? <laughs> okay, we'll run the speech if I can find it. Uh, it's on desktop two. It was. No, it's not. Do it live, Maura. You're joking. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what's happened there? Do we? Sh that's fine. Can you see that um, somewhat strange-looking person there? Uh, oh, I need to share. Uh, sorry, I have to share the computer sound probably. Okay. Right. Has there been someone in your life? that you could look back on and say, they changed my life. Someone of great influence, someone you could call a mentor. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. Let me introduce you to Ron Waterhouse. Ron is now 90 years old and retired of course, so he still dabbles a little bit. But in the second half of the 1980s, he was my boss. And let me give you a little bit of history. For most people, being made redundant is a one-off, potentially life-changing situation. Well, it happened to me three times. Yes, three times in one lifetime. Now you could say I was a careless, but in truth, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was unfortunate. After my second redundancy in 1985, there was a very buoyant job market and I found another job very quickly as assistant to the group finance director of a small but rapidly growing public company in England. My boss was Ron Waterhouse then in his late 50s. And I was, in my view, 
promoted to my level of incompetence. I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. I was supposed to be the IT expert who would spearhead the development of the latest manufacturing software control systems, this being before the age of automation. But I was actually drowning in the reams of computer printout that were landing on my desk. Ken, the managing director, came into my office one day and he said, how are things going, going Moira? Uh, yes, Ken, uh, progressing very well, thanks, whilst crossing my fingers firmly underneath the desk. <clears throat> As often happens, I grew into the job and after a few months I settled into the kind of work that I was well suited to. As assistant to Ron, I had a lot of contact with him and over the months and then years he helped me rise above my inadequacies and gain the self-confidence that was needed to progress my career and indeed take on a new position that once again promoted me to a new level of incompetence, that of divisional finance director. Following an injudicious acquisition of a vegetable freezing plant in Grimsby, a place that was grim by name and definitely grim by nature, the group suffered a massive loss. I was the one who discovered this loss and I had to report it to the board. Without the support and understanding of Ron, I think I would have sunk beneath the weight of that responsibility. As a direct result of this, the company became vulnerable to take over and in fact was acquired by no less than the Campbell Soup Company from America. But that's yet another story and not really pertinent to this one, except insofar as it resulted in my third redundancy and confirmation to me that Ron was indeed the one person whom I could go to to help get my thoughts and my ideas together. For a start, he always had a, had a higher opinion of me and my abilities and my talents than I ever had. And with this, he enabled me to gain much more confidence in myself. Now, he was removed from his position a, a good year before I was, but he stayed in close contact and was in my mind entirely responsible for me being able to get the confidence to start my own business after failing to get another job in the flooded marketplace of the 1991 recession. Now the interesting thing to me about this whole period is that I was never really aware of the influence that Ron had on me, on my working life and indeed on my personal life. While Toastmasters may have given me all the confidence to stand up and speak to you tonight, it was Ron who enabled me to have confidence in myself, enough to go into business on my own account. And now, 30 years on, to have successfully run three different businesses. You see, mentorship does not have to be overt. I was under the influence of this wonderful man for six years of my life, and yet I didn't realize at the time what an important influence this really was. It was through his encouragement and support that I became the person that I am today. So the moral of this story, Mr. Toastmaster, is this. You do not necessarily have to have a formal mentor-protege relationship in order to have a successful outcome. Since the 1990s, I've had a number of people who've influenced my life in a positive way without any formal relationship. So my takeaway for tonight for you is to understand that there are more people who will have influenced your life for the better than you will ever realize now. Mr. Toastmaster. Okay, that was the speech. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about this. Now, I don't want to do, wait too long.
but I'm going to ask for a volunteer to come and evaluate that speech. And if I don't get a volunteer, I'm going to be naming someone. So watch it. <laughs> Now, I see lots of people with heads down and uh, scribbling away madly, so I hope that's a good sign. And I see lots of people who have their camera turned off because they don't want me to call upon them. Very wise. <coughs> Charles, I saw your hand creep up the screen. Are you ready to give an evaluation? Hi, Maura. Thank okay. you very much for giving me the opportunity. I guess you can hear me all. Yep, we can hear you. Yes, I'm going to evaluate on three stands. What I saw, what I heard, and how I felt about your speech. You had a very... Adding up gave you some sort of command while you were delivering the speech. I enjoyed the background, wasn't distracting, and you had a very good eye contact with me as the audience. You, are, you had a lot of vocal variety, and I could see some sort of action which were appropriate with your speech. What I heard was the opening was great. You actually caught my interest. The structure was also, the speech was also well structured and it was more like a storytelling. I was able to follow through with keen interest. How I felt overall, I thought it was a great speech with you expressing your experience and I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Mara. Thank you for that, Charles. Now, open to everybody. Would they like to comment upon Charles's evaluation? Unmute yourself. For a Mara, could, we hear, could we hear a second evaluation first? Okay, yeah, quite happy. If you want to do that way around. Uh, who was that? I didn't actually see who was talking then. Damn, if I'm going to name myself. <laughs> right, so who is going to volunteer to give a second evaluation? Suzanne, you're looking down very intently at your notes. Would you like to give it a go? John Kinsler is offering that. Is he? Uh, I have a hand up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Suzanne, we'll come back to you maybe. John. Okay, well, I've never given an evaluation before, and uh, I spent too much time writing my notes. But um, basically, the, well, uh, thanks for the, uh, what I liked was the, the, um, uh, the uh, your, your greeting, your opening first, really, you know, got, got us looking first in a way, basically. Uh, before the meeting coming in, uh, that, that was good. Inspirational figure was exactly what it was going to be about, um, and, and then you're, and then, but then you're, uh, you're standing up straight and uh, and in, in, clear, in, clear, in clear sight there. So I'd recommend you. Uh, at some stage, you seem to be leaning on something. I'd say, be like a cop in America. Keep your hands where you can see them. Maybe, but otherwise, your posture was very good. Um, it, it, it was a, actually it, 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 it was it, it was a good it was a good story as well. A nice informed story coming in there, and uh, and uh, you know, it, it, finding out a common theme in the in the, in the talk. I'm actually fla flanneling quite a, quite badly now because I really sort of uh, came in a bit too sooner. But uh, but it was a good inspiration story of an unremarkable but honestly remarkably good man, and uh, and the value of the informal mentorship. 
Um, but uh, so my recommendation would be uh, the posture is good. Uh, um, I can't you think of a second recommendation. I, I, I thought it was good in every, in base, in every other respect, or, or uh, in every respect, base, base, basically. And um, I think I volunteered a bit too soon for this. So uh, my uh, it, was, it was a good talk, which I enjoyed and learned from. And uh, I think I'll sign out on that. And I hope I got the overall idea that I was listening and watching and appreciating and learning from it. Um, and uh, that, and that you would appreciate that as well. So I, let's, I should sign off here, and I'll prepare my next evaluation better. John, yeah. remember stage time, stage time, stage time. Yeah. Okay, you did it. Well done. Thank you very much no for that. Right. Do we have anybody else wanting to uh, give it a go? Suzanne, are you, uh, no? Okay. No, I'm, I'm not quite as prepared. Thank you, though. No, that's fine. No worries. <clears throat> Mary Martin, the stage is yours. I can't believe I stuck up my hand there. But there were uh, a, a few things that I would like to put forward about about the speech i have to say you certainly got my attention straight away and that was with the, your use of a question it got me thinking and i was more involved in your speech when when you did that you certainly addressed everybody in the room with your with your greeting and I loved the content of your speech. And there were a few uh, phrases which, which I really enjoyed, like when you spoke about Grimsby, being grim by nature, and it actually did turn out to be because you lost your, your job there or your job changed there. The content of your speech, I thought, was, was very interesting. But I felt that the uh, structure could have been improved. I found myself a little bit lost in the story at times. Now, that may just be me, but I felt that maybe with uh, a slightly different structure, maybe uh, chronological, uh, because I found that you were maybe you were I didn't know what job you were in. Maybe a summary at the beginning might have helped. And then to take us through maybe chronologically and the high, the high points. I loved your conclusion. And it was very clear that you were concluding with my takeaway for you. Altogether, I would say, uh, maybe one further recommendation for you, Myra, would be to have a little bit less clutter in the background. I was wondering what was in that home focus bag uh, that was sitting <laughs> on the table. So maybe bring the camera closer to you and have a little bit less clutter in the background. Altogether, I would, uh, I would like to congratulate you on your on your speech. I thought there was great content there. And I would love to hear more about those stories and about Mr. Waterhouse someday. Thank you. Well done. That was uh, excellent. I hear an alarm going off. Does that mean that I'm over time? Well, I know I'm over time. Let's have a look at uh, those three evaluations. I, I have one main comment, and there's, there's a number of things. First of all, the, the structure of the evaluations. Uh, you, and I, this is not a criticism because you haven't had time to sit down and actually uh, look at the... Um, is that me? Actually, that's my bell going off. Excuse me one second while I switch it off. That was my dinner saying that it was cooked. Uh, where was I? Yeah, the, the structure 
that uh, we call for or we suggest is a very a very rigid structure of an opening, a greeting, um, a commendation, a commendation, a recommendation, a recommendation, a commendation, your best commendation, and then your summary. So I appreciate that you didn't have time to absorb that so much, but let's look at the evaluations themselves. And um, Charles, you had a, a nice opening, a nice common uh, commendation to start with. Uh, basically, you just went through one, two, three, four, five uh, different commendations, and then you did a little bit of summary at the end. There was no recommendations. What I think you slightly missed out on was the why. Why were they good? Why was you know the eye contact good? What what is it about eye contact that makes it good? I, you know this, and maybe we know it as well. But you need to point it out. Say the reason why we want good eye contact is to maintain that connection with the audience. And if you put that little bit of extra in, that really reinforces the comment. Let's see, storytelling. Why is storytelling good? Well, storytelling is good because we grew up with it. When we were knee high to you know, our mother's skirt, we were told stories. Storytelling is something that is innately good to ourselves. It, and again, it's connection with the audience. If we tell a story, the audience can put themselves into the story and imagine themselves in that situation. Uh, right, going on to the second evaluation. Um, yeah, I, the comment here was that there were, rather than having the, the commendations followed by recommendations followed by the commendation, there was a commendation, a recommendation, a commendation, and a recommendation. And the last thing before the, this summary was a, a recommendation, which ideally we don't want to do. We want to have the last thing being uh, the best, the best thing. And the last one, um, now I appreciate that, uh, uh, sorry, going back to number two was John, was it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was your, your first time. Uh, uh, I was told you it by then. And very well done. Uh, yeah. for your first evaluation. Please yeah. don't get me wrong, uh, that was an excellent start. So, uh, so I suppose uh, 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 you're giving a speech basically, prepared like a speech. Yeah, you are, you are, exactly that. But, yeah. and, and that structure is, is quite important. Okay, okay. Mary. Um, Mary, you did very well, I have to say. I don't know if you uh, are experienced in giving evaluations, but that was a good evaluation. Um, the, the only, there's one thing that you could have done maybe to uh, make that uh, almost outstanding would have been to have picked a grab from my speech to open your speech. <laughs> you were kind enough to comment on the, what I used as a, a grab at the beginning. Um, so if you can, pick up a phrase or a sentence from the speech and use that. I'll tell you why it's good for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it brings the audience back into the speech. You could have had, that could have been the first speech of the evening. You could have had three or four more speeches to listen to. And table topics and whatnot in between which yeah, people will forget. So if you can bring out a sentence that will encapsulate that speech, it brings every, the audience's mind back to the speech and it makes it more relevant. But overall, you did uh, excellent. You may be going into a little bit more detail, a little bit more than necessary. And I, uh, I noted one a recommendation right at the end, which was, I think, almost after your conclusion. Oh, no, sorry, conclusion. That was uh, you were congratulating the conclusion. But you did end on a, uh, a recommendation about the clutter. Yeah, I agree totally on the clutter. It was 
completely unacceptable. Uh, the reason that happened was because my uh, I wanted to be visible, as much of my body visible as possible. Maybe I overdid it. Um, and my green screen didn't work. I disappeared into the green screen. So I had to cut the green screen off, which meant you saw all the rubbish on my kitchen table. <laughs> but a very valid point. Otherwise, your points were all uh, good. But again, we need to concentrate on why. Why things are good. If you can have more of the why and less of the what, then we're going to get more learning. Right, a question here. Should the final commendation before the summary be a repeat of the previous commendation or a new one? No, you don't. In your summary, all you're doing is you're summarizing what you've already said. Okay, so um, let's take Mary's for example. Uh, the, com the, the summary would be uh, reduce the clutter in your background. Uh, I can't remember what the, there was another recommendation, but I didn't make a note of it. So reduce the clutter in your background, but it was great attention grabber at the beginning, uh, super contact, co uh, content, and uh, excellent storytelling or structure. That's it. But the one that you end on is the one that you call A, the best one. And that could be any one of those. It's, it's obviously, it's a personal opinion. So the first thing that you do when you're thinking about how, what you're going to, um, what you're going to put into your evaluation is to grade it A, B, C, D, E. So the A is your best accommodation. The B and the C are other accommodations. Your D and E are your two recommendations. Okay, now, sorry, I didn't mean the summary. I mean the commendation after the two recommendations. Should it be repeated? No, your, your third commendation is going to be your best commendation. So what I really loved about your speech was the way you, uh, I don't know, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but um, uh, let's say, take it from uh, Mary's. Uh, the best thing I liked most about your speech was, oh, I've, I'm sorry, I've just seen what the other recommendation is. Apologies for that. Um, the best thing about your speech was the structure, which was, sorry, it wasn't the structure, it was the content. The structure was a recommendation. <clears throat> my notes were a bit scrappy. But yeah, you, you just want it to be what you like most, which is what the, hopefully they're going to take away most. Does that answer your question, Ruth? Good. Any other questions? And Charles, uh, we will be uh, sending out the slides. Um, can, I ask, can I ask a question, Mara? I wasn't quite sure, sure. where I'd write them down. It's Alan Tracy here. And uh, I'm just wondering, if we all follow that formula, yeah. Does it not become terribly formulaic and we expect what way to hear? You know, we're going to hear a recommendation, then we're going to hear a comment, then we're going to hear a duh. I get bored, you know. I know I get bored if, if people don't mix it up a bit, you know. What is most important is the content of the evaluation. The structure is a structure which you can use, which just works. Now, there are other ways of doing it. This is not the only way of giving an evaluation. You can, you can do it however you like. I would say the, the most important bits of the evaluation are the, the what, the when, and the why, and the how. If you can cover those, and you can sandwich your recommendations between your commendations and give your best commendations at the end and give a summary, that's okay. Does that answer? So, you? so, so basically, what I'm hearing is um, you don't need to follow the formula, but as long as you follow the formula, you're going to do great. Yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put it any other way. It's I use this formula. Uh, I have been using it now for well, five years, six years, and it just works. I, I stick to it quite rigidly, and I never have to worry about my 
evaluation being a bad evaluation. It might not Could be. I just ask yes. you, Moira? Yes. Um, I, I tend to come into the evaluation, you know, almost like a speech, because what I had written down straight away on your evaluation was, I said, an interesting story delivered with confidence and panache. And that sort of introduces me to, to, that's a good to, to my evaluation. That's, yeah, that's a good opening. Yeah. Maura, so then I would go Maura, on to say about... Get, Maura, I was going to say, you make, you make an excellent cake. Don't change the recipe. <laughs> I like that one. I shall remember that one. Given how often people can forget ingredients um, under contest conditions and against the clock, it never get the same cake twice. That's true. That's true. Okay, we are 15 minutes past the supposed closing. Uh, I'm happy to carry on if other people want me to, if you've got other questions. But uh, I feel that's probably enough for you to remember. Um, I should put my email address in the chat. Uh, I am happy to uh, take one-to-ones with individuals if they want. Um, let me just put this in. At myraobrien.com. Okay. Oops, you, should have been, that should have been an at, not an estra, 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 estra What about the mark. recording? Are you happy that we've wrapped well, up? Or? No, if you just wait for a few seconds, I'm going to just give you a little summary um, of the way. Oh, I did have that already lined up. So what did we cover today? We had the top takeaways. We had the benefits of the evaluation to the evaluator, to the speaker, and to the club. We had the feedback mindset. We had the seven-step process and Freddie's feedback formula. Those, that's what we covered today. That's what I hope you're going to remember. And there, if you want to take a screenshot of that, that's my uh, contact details. Well, it's all about me except my email address, which is in the chat. So thank you all for being an excellent audience and thank you for the, the three contributors who were brave enough to give us their evaluations. It's much appreciated and I will say goodbye and thank you. Very much, thanks a lot. I'd like to say a big thank you to 